Hello everybody, Andrea from Spazio Rock here. I'm in Bergamo at the kickoff show of a short Italian tour of super guitar hero Gas G. Hello guys, welcome back to Italy. Hello, uh, thank you, it's great to be here. We saw you recently in October as a support for Camelot, and now you're back again uh, for three shows. Um, do you have any good memories about Italian fans and Italy in general? Absolutely, I mean, I'm here all the time. It's a short flight from Greece. So <laughs> I like to hop on a plane every few months and come down here and play shows. Um, it was great last year when we went to play with Camelot and it was great uh, earlier actually last year I did uh, some other shows. I did um, some shows uh, down south, some festivals in the summer. I also did um, a few headline shows in the beginning of next year, of l last, last year, year, I'm sorry, yeah, in 2015. Um, and now we're back again. Uh, after this, this tour, you will go to America. Uh, what expectations do you have for the tour? For the American tour? No idea. Um, it's going to be my first kind of tour in the, in the States as solo, um, with my solo band. And um, I'm using um, um, American musicians for that, um, for that tour. Uh, I'm going to be out with Rob Rock on vocals. Uh, and the whole band is based in Tampa in Florida. Um, so I, I don't know. I think uh, there's a lot of excitement there. I haven't. I, I don't play that often in America the last few years. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it's gonna be okay. And uh, what are the, the future plans? Will you be back with a big headlining tour in Europe? Um, no. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I've, I have a couple of festivals with Firewind in the summer, and um, trying to put a new album together. Um, I'm also writing for for my next solo record a little bit with Mats. Um, so we see how it pans out. Uh, we're probably gonna do a, we're probably gonna do another a Firewind tour first before I go back out solo again. Yeah. What is it like working with and touring together with Matt? It's great. He's uh, the easiest easiest going guy I've ever worked with. Um, We're like, we've been friends for so long, more than 10 years. Um, and we've always talked about doing something together and finally came, finally happened when I started working on my solo record. And uh, I mean, my first two solo records, I wrote a lot with Matt's, but I wrote with other people. But for the future, I, I, wanna, I wanna make a record um, that Matt's is a part of from start to finish, you know? Because uh, we play a lot of shows together and we are really good friends and we have a really good working chemistry together. Um, so yeah, he's one of my best buddies and uh, one of the best people in this industry to work with. Talking about your career, uh, how did you put up with the exponential raise of interest towards you after joining your Jaws' band? Well, I mean, it was, a, it was a big change for me, for my life and my career, and it was a, it was a wonderful thing what happened. And um, I learned a lot from that and I... Um, It, w it made me want to become so much better and practice more and just get better at, um, of how I present myself, how I play, how I approach music. It was just, it w yeah, it, it was just an experience of a lifetime. And um, I mean, it's, if I, I only have great memories, you know, and uh, I mean, we, I can't wait to, to do some more stuff with him in the future. Yeah. Um. Last time I spoke to Matt, he mentioned that the fact, the fact that with Ozzy you play big arenas and festivals, but when touring as a solo artist, it's all back to basics in small venues in front of maybe a hundred people, but playing your own songs. Um, which one is the most re rewarding or challenging? I'm the kind of guy who just likes to play. So I, I never, I mean, I always, give it my best you know it doesn't matter if it's a hundred people in the audience or a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand i i like to do intimate gigs and i like to play big shows of course all musicians do um it's all 
rewarding, you know, as long as there's interest there and there are people show up to see you play, it's, it's, uh, it's fine with me. What's the most interesting band or bands uh, among the new generation of European metal acts? I don't know. I don't really keep up with that. So I'm an old school guy. So I, I don't know who's who now. So. And what about bands from Greece? Bands from Greece. Um, well, you have Firewind, obviously. <laughs> you have the classic black metal bands that we've had for many years, like Rotten Christ, who's a legendary band. And Septic Flesh, of course. Those guys are like, they go way back. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of younger bands that are um, doing really good right now. The Greek scene is really blooming. A lot of stoner bands and uh, like a thra also like an underground thrash metal scene. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of, lot of talent from Greece. Always has been and now it's finally, it's, they're, they're, the scene is, is, is growing, which I'm very happy about. Okay, thank you very much for the interview and uh, have a good show tonight. Thank you very much. Mats, you've had a fantastic career so far, starting as a relatively unknown uh, singer from Gothenburg in the mid 80s, then rising up to fame with uh, Ingwie, touring uh, the world twice with Therion, and now you've become the lead singer for Candlemas. What can we expect from you in the next month? Uh, well, right now we're in Italy, doing three shows with Gus G, of course. And uh, in two weeks from now, we go to South America, Latin America, with uh, Canamas. So we play seven shows in six countries. And uh, then kind of the festival season starts, you know. We do like seven, eight festivals with Canamas. Might do a festival or two with Gus as well. And uh, after the summer, uh, during this time, I'm going to do some recording as well. Uh, I'll record an album with uh, the thing I worked with before as well as a guest singer. And uh, I'll be writing some songs as well when I'm in the studio at home. So I'll be pretty busy, I think, until September. And then I don't know really what the rest of the year looks like. I mean, we have a couple of festivals, September and October with Calamass as well. But uh, that's as much as I know right now. You've been working on a solo album for many years. Yeah. What is the current status? Uh, the current status is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release the songs like separate singles, like separate songs, one at a time. And uh, the first song is already kind of done. I'm just waiting to work with the right guys to do a video for it, because I want to make a video for it. And uh, so that's the next thing. I mean, the song is there. Uh, so it's, it's just a question of when and how I want to introduce it, so to speak. When is the best time for me to do it and I want to have a proper video for it that I'm really happy with. That I'm going to do in, in Stockholm because I have several people that I know that are very professional. Uh, it's just a question of getting them to have some time to work with me as well. So, so that's, instead of releasing one whole album right away, I will instead release a couple of songs, you know, just to kick start, you know, take it a little piece by piece, so to speak. And then eventually it will be an album of those songs and more songs as well. When was the moment you realized that you wanted to, be, to make a living um, out of music and be a professional singer? Well, you know, when you start, you don't really know if you're going to be able to survive doing this, you know. But I, I remember the specific moment when I just decided to just quit my job I actually quit my relationship that I had and everything. That was probably half a year before I joined Swedish Erotica in 88, 89, the first album I did. That's about the time when I just felt, you know, I really wanted to play music as much as possible, give it a chance. I just felt really locked in my life situation the way it was in 88 with my work and with my girlfriend that I had. So uh, I just took my chances and just left everything behind and had nothing really, you know. But uh, that's where it started, and you know, then of course, gradually, once you do more and more stuff, you play more and more, you start to understand that maybe, you know, I could continue doing this. And I guess then the next step was playing with Inve, I guess, because Inve was my first world tour and the first time I got well paid as well, you know, as a musician, you could say. So that was that was the next step, I guess. 
what kind of advice would you give to a young singer uh, to find its own way to be and be able to really give something to the, to the music today? Well, you know, I I have a couple of students at home, and I always try to make them understand that it's for me. It's always been really good to listen to a lot of different kinds of music and to sing a lot of different kinds of covers as well. It's been fun. I think I think I learn a lot by doing that. Uh, at the same time, you know, it could be a singer, a young singer who just sounds fantastic, who's got his very specific kind of style. Then it's like, hey, just keep on doing that. That's it, you know, just do it, you know. Then, of course, you know, I always have good advice for singers when it comes to how to, to warm up for tours, how to warm up for shows and make sure that you can be a good singer the whole tour instead of just the two first shows and stuff. But apart from that, you know, just make sure that you play as much as possible and sing as much as possible when you have the chance because you need to keep keep doing it you know especially when you get a bit older as well it's really it's like going to the gym you know you got to be there all the time if you don't go for two weeks you come back oh it's so it's so hard you know so it's like it's good to kind of keep going all the time and that's why i always did many cover shows in stockholm as well just to play with my friends make the extra buck when i needed to do that but also to kind of keep the voice in shape you know so, uh, you know, I, what is it like uh, playing and touring with Gus G? It's very easy and simple because what I really like with Gus is that we don't use any backtracks. It's nothing like that. We just get up on stage, we grab our instruments, and we just play. And it sounds great every time. And, you know, if you look at the stuff that Gus has, you know, he, he only has a couple of pedals. That's it, you know. Go straight into the amp, and that's it. I really like that because it's... There's no frills. There are, there are many bands out there today that, you know, they're so dependent on all the shit around them all the time. But for us, we can just get up there and play. And he's a fantastic player, obviously. So it's, I really enjoy that. I think it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm.